Hello everyone, I'm Lou Collins and thank you for visiting my channel. Now today I want to talk to you about stamping tips and tricks. So that's not only so you can get perfect results from your stamping every time, but also so you can learn some new techniques. If you love videos like this, please remember to subscribe below. So grab your stamping tools and let's get started. So the first technique we're going to look at is using a white ink underneath your pigment ink. So your pigment ink is a nice bright colour. When you're putting it onto darker cardstocks, of course, that colour's just going to get absorbed. It dulls it down, you can't really see it. This gives a fantastic 3D effect. So we're going to start, first of all, with the white. I'm going to just bring in some floral stamps. So I will start gathering up my flowers. I'll have to do a few of these at a time because they're all individual stamps. I'm going to use my stamping platform just to bring that over. And I've got a white ink. Now, it needs to be a white pigment ink and um, you will need to allow this time to dry so give it as long as you possibly can between impressions to allow each of the layers of white to dry now i also like to go in with one or two layers more than usual so use my stamp platform press that down bring that over you can see i've got some mist spots so just pop that on because I'm sitting down I'm not getting as much pressure as I usually would on my stamping platform if I was standing up but I'm going to keep repeating this as you can see we've got that lovely bright white showing up there and that will dry equally as clear there we go nicely just a little bit more there and then I'm just going to remove this one and I'm going to use that one again around about here to create a spray of flowers. Bear in mind I've still got the ink on that one. I'm going to leave that stamp there just because I've got a little more ink that I'd like to add to that again. And I think last time the other stamps were preventing that from going down. So I'm just going to repeat stamp this. So there my white ink is completely dry now. I did use a heat tool just to take some of the excess moisture off, um, but you definitely want it as dry as possible. Now I'm going to lay each of my stamps back over where I stamped previously. Let's start with this one at the top as we did earlier. I'm just going to lay that over, but I'm going to offset it ever so slightly. So I'm going to bring the stamp either to the left or the right, up or down by just a few millimetres. I think I'm going to go down and slightly to the right with this so ever so slightly it really is millimeters and I'm going to do the same for all of the other stamps as well so I'll do these two stamps first now I've placed them on the white where they were before I've shifted them ever so slightly just a few millimeters off so they're offset now pick up with my stamping block and now I'm going to take another pigment ink now this is my bright color it's cracked pistachio it's a lovely green of course, on the uh, craft cardstock, it wouldn't show up nice and bright like this. But where we've got that white ink down, we will see a much brighter colour. So just fold that over, press into place, concentrating on the areas where the stamp is. I'm just going to allow that to soak into that craft cardstock a little bit. And hopefully you can see there, we've got this three-dimensional look. I'm just going to... Do a little more colour there. So you can see we've got the darker line underneath where the ink is stamped straight onto the craft and we've got the lighter colour where it's stamped onto the white or over the white. It's a lovely effect and it's really pretty. It gives a dimensional effect to otherwise completely one layer or flat cards. If you prefer to post your cards or you do post your cards, this is a great way of adding that extra texture. So now I've got two layers of the green. I'm just going to do that to the other two flowers here as well. So as you can see, we've got that dimensional effect there. That's all dry. You can completely fill your background here if you want to. I love that it looks 3D, that it looks as if there's raised areas. The stamp set that I used for this card was the Textures Stitch in Time stamps. These are my embroidery flowers and these are available at craftstash.co.uk or craftstash.us. I will link everything down in the below description. So on to the next technique. When you're working with a brand new stamp, you need to prepare the stamp. And by that, I mean you need to take off the coating that's left on there from the manufacturing process. 
I find the easiest way to do this and you only need to do it the once when you first get your stamp is to use a pencil eraser so I just use a large one I keep this in my craft tool bag and I just rub the flat surface over the top of the stamp there this is really important if you're using stamps that have a large surface area as well detail stamps not so much but definitely the larger bulkier stamps need to have this done if you don't do this you're going to get pooling on the surface and then when you go and impress your stamp you're going to see that pooling in the image this way what we can do now is use our ink and we know that we're going to get a perfect impression every time because the ink's going to be spread nice and evenly over the surface with nothing on there that's going to um, make that ink pool or um, separate in any way. The next technique I'm going to show you is called the kiss technique and you need to start with a solid stamp and you need to have some detail stamps. Ideally background stamps are perfect. This is from Sizzix and these are from the brand of textures. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up my solid stamp there. It's just like a brush stroke, a paint swatch. I'm going to ink this up with a distress oxide. So just pressing the ink all into the stamp making sure that I have full coverage on there and I'm just going to leave that sat on there for a moment because what I'm now going to do is take a VersaFine ink and I'm going to press some fresh black ink into my background there. That's quite a detailed background stamp so lifting up my oxide and I'm picking up the black ink from the stamp there and I'm going to press that down onto my paper and that's going to transfer the yellow of the distress oxide and the black of the lace pattern there. So let's just see that once more with a different color oxide and a different stamp. So let's go with the speckled egg oxide. Again, ink my stamp up. I find that in this room particularly, it's a warm room, my VersaFine does tend to dry on the um, stamp quite quickly so I do apply this just before I'm about to do the kiss technique so there's my speckled egg going into the newsprint side of this butterfly so you can see it on there and then stamp that directly into there and that should all lift off and leave you with your newsprint effect now let's try that with an even larger stamp I'm going to use a larger block for this stamp it's a large word birthday it's almost solid besides some lines between the words so we're going to see what this looks like I want to use milled lavender for this I'm just pressing that down into the word birthday as much as possible there we go making sure every area is covered and then I've got a textures Jack Frost stamp here this is one that's all text and distressed background there are a few little snowflakes and circles and such in there there we go so fresh ink all round bringing the birthday over to the Jack Frost background stamp pressing that down you need to be careful because of course the two inks together they do get a little bit slippery so don't go sliding it across or you do lose the effect of that detail just move my magnets out of the way here and press this down onto my paper now I'm using my stamping block just as a way of clinging my background stamps but you don't need to use it this is much easier to do without a platform just with an acrylic block or a portable stamping block there we go so carefully lift that up and you can see we've got the text I missed a little bit there I'd stand up and press that harder but we've got the text into the background of the birthday word the technique that I love doing is stamping using different color inks now you can do that with ink pads but because of the size of most ink pads it's very difficult to get any detail in there and that's where your pens come in so any water-based ink pens you can use to color in your stamps for a beautiful effect so I'm going to use Karen markers because these are water-based they have a lovely juicy nib to them lots and lots of ink in there 
So I'm going to use these to colour my stamp. Just two colours, so I've got a floral stamp here and I'm going to go over with the blue, keeping the nib flat against the stamp rather than pressing the point in. And I'm just going to brush over the surface of the stamp there. I don't mind if some of my ink goes into uh, lower, further into the stamp, because they're not the pieces that's going to touch the surface of the paper. It's just those raised areas you need to make sure you've got ink on. Um, with these as well, you need to make sure this is a water-based ink and not an alcohol pen. If you use an alcohol pen, the alcohol ink will dry on the surface of the stamp before you even get chance to stamp it. You won't get the same sort of effect. Well, you probably won't get much effect at all. But with these, because they're water-based, they're not going to dry on the surface of the stamp, so you've got lots of time to do your colouring in. Now, it's a good idea to make sure, unlike me, that you've got a clean stamp when you're doing this, so you can clearly see whereabouts your ink's going, and maybe put a little bit of white paper underneath as well, so that you can see whereabouts that um, ink is, and whether or not you're happy with the effect. So, just finishing going over. I am overlapping some areas. I'm not being too fussy with this. I'm not being precise at all. I'm just really, I've picked out the flowers in the blue, with the blue pen and now I'm going over the rest of the image here with the green just picking out the leaves and there's some script and some swirls in there as well that I'm grabbing so making sure I've got all the rest of the image now because I'm using a stamping platform if I've missed any parts of course I can easily come back and um, re-ink and re-stamp so let's first of all just transfer this once and make sure that we're happy with the image that we've got and where all the colours are. There we go, just press down a little bit harder in the centre of those flowers. Lovely, so we've got a coloured image there already. Now that gives a very watercolour look, but you can enhance that by just spritzing very lightly the surface of your stamp, still with that ink on there, and you can press it back into this detail. That's only going to um, enhance the look, make it look more of a watercolour thing. Look at that, much, much brighter, much darker. Now, once you've got that, again, we're using a watercolour or water-based ink, so you can go ahead and you can spritz your image if you want to, and just allow, this will take a moment or, to, or so, but allow those colours to start to bleed out even more, and you can then go in with your inks, um, maybe with a little bit of water on a brush, and you can paint inside the petals if you want to as well. Lots of different techniques using your stamps and using water-based ink pens. The next technique for you to try is using water to lift up your ink using your stamp. So many of us have ink blended with distress inks or distress oxides, and then we've flicked or splattered some water on there and it's lifted up uh, where we've splattered. But now we, we can apply the water just where the stamp is. Now this gives kind of a, uh, a looser um, effect, so you won't get the perfect image lifted up, but it's not far off. So I've blended into this paper a Distress Oxide in Seedless Preserves and Prize Ribbon, and I've made sure I've got lots and lots of ink on there. I'm just going to tack this down to make sure it doesn't move, just in case I want to re-stamp. And I'm going to take this is a Textures Reflections heart stamp, so it's half a heart there and it's all made up of words. So I'm just going to bring that over, lift that up, and then I'm going to spritz this very lightly with paper, uh, sorry, with water. So very lightly, just over there, making sure that I've not got any, any water that's going to drip from around the edge, unless of course you're happy to have those extra drips and droplets. So you don't want water running off at all, you just want it on the stamp. Turn that over and press that down. And I'm just going to hold that for a moment into my ink, allowing that to start reacting with the Distress Oxide. When I'm happy that I've pressed down everywhere over the stamp just for a few moments. I'm going to carefully lift that up and as you can see already we're starting to get that effect and if you dry it with a heat tool that will come even brighter even quicker. 
Now, of course, you can keep repeating this with a little more water over your stamp until you've lifted up as much of that ink as you want to. You'll never get it back to bright the bright white paper that it was underneath, but it won't be far off. And of course, don't forget that on your stamp, you've lifted up that ink that has to go somewhere. It's all sitting on your stamp. So just a light mist of your stamp there. Fold that over onto a clean piece of paper or cardstock and just transfer that image. You never know what the result's going to be, but it's well worth just taking the time to do this extra stage because there we've got a beautiful ombre image there as well. So we've got the ink lift just with water and then we've got that extra transfer. The very last technique I want to show you is my absolute favorite stamping technique ever. I've been doing this many, many years and I really do love it. So this gives you a bit of a vintage feel to any stamp. I'm going on to watercolour paper. It's essential that you go on to watercolour. It just doesn't work so well if you go on to a smooth cardstock. Um, and you're going to need a water reactive ink, such as Distress Oxide or Distress Inks. And you're going to need something that doesn't react with water. So I'm going to use my Versifying Claire. You're also going to need some water in a mist bottle too. First thing we're going to do is dampen our watercolour paper. Now you can do this lightly, quite lightly to start with and allow that water to soak in for a moment. So it's a good idea to do that now whilst you're inking up your stamp. You do need to use a stamping platform for this technique because it's absolutely imperative that you stamp in exactly the same position both times. So we're going to be stamping twice. So I'm just going to go over with my brown while that water is soaking into the paper, making sure that I've covered everywhere. Now, the first stage of this technique, it does look a little strange, okay? But once you've added the black ink, it looks amazing. So don't be scared off when you see the first part. So I'm just going to hold that down. So this is a stamping platform where I have to hold the image down onto the paper. And hopefully you can just see around the edge here, it's starting to wick into that wet paper. The ink is starting to spread a little bit. So I'm going to hold this for maybe 20 seconds, something like that, not too long. And then lift that up. And you can see we've got quite a blurry image of the florals in the brown, but you can still make out that it is a floral spray. I'm just cleaning up with an old uh, piece of cloth. I'm just cleaning up my ink pad there or my stamp there and I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm just going to dry this off. There we go, the main part of the image is dry. There's a little bit of water still on my stamping platform but I'm not worried about that as long as it's not on the paper. So now I come in with my uh, pigment ink. This is not going to react with the water, this one, because it's a Versafine. There's others on the market, um, something like Memento would work just as well. Um, you want something that's quite juicy if you're doing a large stamp to make sure it doesn't dry. But again, using a stamping platform if you miss an area with your ink or of course if it dries before you get a chance to transfer the whole image, you can go in and add a little more ink and re-stamp in exactly the same place. There we go. So look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Let me lift that up for you. You can see the detail, it's stunning. It's such a nice effect. Looks as if it's been burnt into wood. If you were to find a watercolor paper that's maybe got um, a slight tan color or more of a yellowy color to it, so maybe more of a natural cotton watercolor paper, you'd be able to really get that look of uh, pyography in there absolutely beautiful and hopefully these tips and techniques will help you on your way to becoming an even better crafter. I will link all the products down below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you soon with another video.